All right, I got a little bit of a project today, and it'll probably be the next couple days. I already started on it, but this retaining wall has been an eyesore since forever since I bought the place. And if you can't tell how much it's heaved, that's pretty straight up and down. I can stick my whole boot under there. So it's heaved over real good. But we're going to go over and show you how I'm going to build this retaining wall. This is not going to be a expert video. I'm going to probably take it out to right there where somebody uh, before me built the stone wall. But we're going to try to match it back up. Get rid of all this through here. Burn it. I'm not going to do a giant time lapse because this is going to be worked on as I get time over days. And I'll update occasionally as I go. But right now I get the trailer backed into that yard and everything I already tore out throwing up on. See this is the main problem I had with it. They sheeted the back side with uh, landscape plastic. <clears throat> you know that stuff you put on your garden. And the problem is none of the water whenever it got behind there could go anywhere. So it just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and eventually the whole top collapsed. This used to be two tiers, actually three tiers. <clears throat> but I want to carry it up to that corner a little bit too. We'll see what I end up with when it's done. This will probably be a uh, situation dictating design kind of a deal. Alright, nothing to it but to do it. Here we go. So sorry I'm posted in a little while, or actually recorded in a little while, excuse me. It's been about two weeks, but it's been kind of the same. First off, I found a whole bunch of uh, lightly used tires in my wall. So if any of you guys want about, I don't know, a dozen and a half lightly used tires, make a uh, offer on all of them, please, because uh, I don't know what else I'm going to do with them. But anyway, knocked out all the wood, mostly. And then I used my backhoe and I kind of scraped everything down, all the loose stuff. And now I'm hauling it out because this is all going to back filled with stone anyway. So, you know, my truck to my trailer up there. Got the tractor. Scooping it. Dumping it. Burning what I can. I ain't going to get all the wood. There's just too much mixed in. But I'll get, uh, I'll get the majority of it if it's big enough. Because you got like little fibers and bits and chunks of wood because it's so rotted all throughout the whole thing but you know something like that I'll burn I do plan on putting my drainage into this pipe there's a pipe buried right here I did whenever I did this concrete pad sorry I got mud on my boots but it'll come out there for right now but I'm actually gonna bury that pipe and chase it all the way down to the corner of the house and then I can empty into the backyard I just got to make sure I don't crush it. But I'm going to move all these tires so I can start scraping from this side. See how many loads I can get out before it rains on me too good. This is a bunch of crap. But uh, thank God I have that thing. Because I really wouldn't have done this by hand. I, honestly, if you don't have a machine, you got a wall this big to build. I would... Seriously, think about buying a machine or hiring it out. To rent it, let me give you a little bit of advice. This is what I thought too. Originally, I was going to rent one. Well, then you got days like today where it rains, where you don't get your money back. And around my neck of the woods, to rent a machine like that, it's about $250 for the weekend. So for four weekends, you're looking at a thousand bucks. My idea all along was to buy one. For let's say fifteen thousand, use it for what I got to do, and then sell it for about fifteen thousand, because those things really do hold their value. But I'm gonna keep digging at it, and uh, I'll post another video whenever I got this all cleared out. Might be a week, might be two weeks. We'll see. All right, out. All right, just showing you how far back I dug uh, to give you an idea. 
That right there used to be where the wall jutted out and connected. And if you look up, straight up that line. It's uh, a couple feet back overall, but realistically at the base here, you know, I'm only maybe two, three feet. Uh, further up you go, the less it is. Uh, big old honking rock area, that's why there's this little outcropping here. But that right there is the edge of the concrete. And that's where my first tie is going to go. And then as you see, it angles over here. I didn't quite uncover it, I'm running out of daylight, but goes off in yonder direction. You see it right there sticking out straight, but I'm hoping it makes a corner somewhere underneath this dirt pile. Because what I'm planning on doing is bringing one straight row in here, one straight row in there, and then building it up with like a 45 through the center. So I'm gonna have a true 90 degree cut. And then it's gonna carry on up past and of course there's going to be two tiers so it'll basically come up, bend in, go over to here, and then go up. And then this up, upper wall is going to fall straight out. But it's going to follow the contour of the ground. So the ties will remain level, but I'm not sure if I can show you this. But anyways, from here over, it slowly slopes up. So there you can see where my tracks are going out. Uh, this is all just kind of sloped off. A lot of work, a lot of moving dirt. I couldn't do it without a machine. If you're trying to do this by something this big by hand, you're crazy. Uh, got a lot of junk to burn still. This is that uh, bush that was in the wall. This is the root system out of it. Uh, just burning the crap out of stuff. I'm going to grab out log air. Try to get most of the rest of this burn up tonight. Oh, my tire collection's getting bigger. Uh, it grew by about six today. But, uh, yeah. I found a guy who's going to take them. He wants three bucks a piece. He don't care if it has a wheel in it or not. I said, that's great. It's three bucks a piece. I'm looking at about $100 just to get rid of all these. But, you know, what else are you going to do? throw them on the fire. Don't do that. That's illegal. Bad for the environment. But I imagine that's what some people would do. Alright, I'm going to throw some more logs on the fire. Run into Napa. The wife's car needs an oil change. Woohoo! And uh, her windshield washer is leaking for some reason. Anyway, uh, none of, almost none of this dirt is going to go back in. It's all going to be 2B shale and pipe. I'm going to run a pipe from there straight on down here to, uh, excuse me, to this corner. There's already a pipe laid in there. I don't know if I covered it before. I'm going to have to apologize. There's days and sometimes weeks in between videos and I don't remember what I said. All right, here we go. Those blocks aren't even very good blocks. Oh, well, I'm not taking that one out. Bye. All right, we're working, making steady progress. I'm starting to put my base in for the base of the wall. And I think I come to the conclusion, instead of trying to fit that angle in that's in the concrete for that foot and a half, I'm just gonna come straight over into there, straight into here, and then maybe one day I'll pour a little concrete and fill that gap in. Shouldn't be but maybe a bag, so. Maybe two at the most. But I found my, this is the original drainage pipe, pokes out over there. Hello, drainage pipe. Uh, I'll eventually chase it further down into the yard. But for right now, it just gets the water past the house down the hill. And I had to dig it back up, connect to it. Um, funny note, the, I originally ran the pipe right up to the wall. And you can see that joint and see how much concrete there was. That's 
partially because the wall pushed so far. But then if you look at this nail, that timber wall was built on top of the pad. I'm going to use the pad as like a brace to keep everything from pushing so easily. Uh, not much else going on, really. Uh, I'm going to have to run a string line now. I tried digging it by line of sight, but I was tired and it got all wonky up through there. So please ignore that. Please ignore the fact that I know my backhoe landing legs ain't laying on anything, but I was just playing, thinking while I was trying to do stuff. But I think that's going to be it for now. I'm going to get some rebar. What I think I'm going to do is actually lay in the first course and chase it over to where it's eventually going to end and then start prepping for the second course and take an inventory of what I got for railroad ties yeah oh and this pipe isn't going to be this high or probably that far back it just was easier to go ahead and tee one in that was too long because once I put the excuse me once I put the tie across it should sit right over top of this I'm going to fill all this in with like some 2B shale. That's why there's no shale on it right now. And then when I decide how far back I want it, I'm going to chop it. I'm going to move that 90 down and then chop this so that the um, pipes can follow the wall on the inside. Right up against it on the bottom. And then once I get up so high, I'll start filling it in with a uh, little 2B. Um drainage and that should keep I, I did watch the again I apologize I'm repeat myself but like I said right in here from the top of the road on down that's where all the water is coming from and it's kind of nice that I got that almost in line with that to there to out so this wall should last forever I mean I know the ties will eventually rot like everything does but we got plenty of time all right, I'm call it a day. Go watch some NASCAR last race of the season today. That'll give you an idea of what time frame I'm filming in, and what time frame it'll get finished. I don't know if this will be one, two, six, eight, twelve videos, but I'm working on it as I get time. Hopefully, be done before Christmas. <laughs> All right, out. All right, sometimes you gotta take. A whole bunch of steps forward to make it even better. What happened was, I was watching the rain. Like I said, I got this pipe right about the right spot. The rainwater comes washes on down, and it'll go right into the pipe and out. But the other problem is this pad. All this water would come over now that the wall's gone, and it would pond right in this area. So I wanted to carry out water, water away, and I wasn't real thrilled about how the drainage worked out anyway. So I dug everything back up. I'm gonna lay in 2B all over the place. And I ran this four inch pipe to help carry the water away. I got it capped right now on that side because uh, you know I'm gonna chase it further up that way with another pipe. But um, yeah, it's where all the water was coming. I'm trying to carry the water away. It is all down bubble. Uh, even if it doesn't look it in the camera uh, I ran a string level from there to a well now I pulled it out a piece of rebar I pounded in over here measured in eight inches from the bottom of this pipe flange eight inches up from the bottom then using the concrete as my guide figuring that I was going to be about an inch below the edge of the concrete here with my pipe on this side I measured seven inches from the top of the concrete because like I said the bottom of the pipe is going to be slightly below it and from there to there even though it may not look it because even looking at it I don't it doesn't look it but it's uh it's down bubble so we go from this point here this corner over there is actually downhill where the pipe is anyway 
and I made sure everything has just a little bit of down bubble. You don't need much uh, to make water run. Like, we're talking um, about a quarter inch a foot, and that's a, that's a little gap there. I might have to tap that back in, or I might just leave it. The water will find its way. It's all perforated, so the water will find its way. But right now, I'm gonna take. I just wanted to film this, and I take some, take my backhoe, a four ton of 2B up on the hill, and I'm gonna start loading it off and filling this in. I'm gonna bring this all back up nice level, and then set my ties in. I should have a tie going from you know across here and across there to say. And then plus, with it being recessed to the back, whenever water does get in my ties, it should flow back away from not lay up against which is spectacular all right let's go all right sorry for the running tractor in the background but well, I'll probably get a better angle from this side even though the tractor's a little louder but there's my drainage pipe running out and if I don't slip and fall on the ice and break my neck um, the thing I'm going to start incorporating into this are dead men. So dead man, the way I'm going to do them, a lot of times guys build them straight out and then they just attach a piece on it and make a T. Well, the problem with that is, is then that thing can pull sideways and then out. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it one off here to there. One off that joint. I actually cut the this one and the next one a little short. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off against the wall. Well, first I'm gonna fill this in. Then I'm gonna come off against the wall, level nice and square. Two dead men there. I cut a piece, put in the middle. But then I'm gonna take a full tie and put it on the back to make like a box. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Right about here. It's going to come out, go over, and back in probably actually onto this tie. Uh, I'm trying to keep them over the joints so that way I'm holding more than one tie back is the idea. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it sounds good. So I'm going to use that thing to put a whole bunch of 2B shale into here, 2B gravel. And then once I get it leveled up, I'll cut my pieces, make up my dead men, and I'll show you that. It's starting to look like something. It's starting to look like winter. Ugh. Anyway, here we go. Alright, might be a little difficult to envision, but this is what I'm talking about. Now I extended it further over to this side. Don't mind the chainsaw on that tie, but this is the box and then this is all going to get filled up and then if this wall tries to push it's going to basically have to pull that one out out of the wall you know what i mean and then i'm going to do something similar down there except this one's going to be a little different excuse me where it's actually going to extend this way towards this pipe and then back over in there somewhere it'll it'll sit will be the second one it'll probably be on top of uh, this here somewhere haven't decided where yet I have to carve a little bit out of that hillside to get it in but I mean it just keep building keep going keep going up this is this is like making it three-dimensional you know so that way the hillside has to pull against itself to push and I said, a little tough to see, but there's a lag bolt there, and there's one there. And it's splitting the seams, so that way I'm holding both ties. And I'll do the same over there. I don't think I'll be able to do it exactly the same there and get what I want, because I didn't put a seam, so it'll just be somewhere on that tie. But it's getting lower over there. This This is climbing up and out, so... It, there won't be as much pushing against it over there, so that's that's kind of my justification for doing that. You know what I mean? 
All right, back to it. Well, it's been a little while since an update, and I'm running out of battery, so I'm going to hurry up and explain this. As you can see, I went up, installed my dead men, and then went up. These are going to be dead men as well. Uh, I'm going to start my set, and they're also going to be the base of the second tier. Now, I've lag bolted and screwed these straps in to help hold everything back. I, I'm afraid of everything coming this way. So this will be pushing against this. But like I said, in here will get filled. This is going to go up one more tier. So this will get filled with stone. And then the second tier will get filled to the brim with dirt. So these will actually be buried behind the wall. Behind the second tier. But as you can see, going straight across. Just keep lagging them together. It's going to overlap. Let's hope I have enough battery for this. It's going to run up and over here. There will be one more layer here, and then this will continue to go up till probably right about in there where I have it dug out. But, yep, just keep plugging away. It's Christmas time. It's, it was 10 degrees last night, which I know if you're from Alaska, it ain't real cold, but I'm from Pennsylvania. It's supposed to warm up, but every time it warms up, all that just turns to mud. Once again, couldn't have done it without a tractor. Now I'm going to get to putting some screws in. Oh, yeah, everything is lagged together. At least three lag screws, 10-inch lags per tie. And these are lagged one in each here, and then one from the top down there, and then so on and so forth. Full ties for dead men. All right, we're going to build up a couple levels. I'm going to run my pipe, and uh, probably won't backfill today because... Stupid me didn't realize what the weather was going to be like, and my bucket is froze solid with a whole bunch of crap in it. But I can build up at least a couple of layers until the weather warms up tomorrow. Okay, out. Well, it's going to be almost 60 degrees here today because I live in Pennsylvania. I had to get some more ties. Uh, I took a week off for Christmas. But we worked on this thing that entire week, and now it is right before New Year's. I have one more day to burn. New Year's Eve is tomorrow, and this is what we got. So, I'll walk you with what I got so far. And it's actually the biggest hurdle I got right now is just getting up here. Because this thing is huge. And I know what you're thinking. If I had to do it over again, I'd run a couple of string lines because it does get a little wonky. But, can't see it from my window, nor the neighbors, so we'll live with it. And yeah, I ain't undoing this to redo it all over again. But, so if you notice, I should have probably shot a little bit of this. There's a couple dead men. Well, the dead men are tied in twice. So you have that one right there, and then that one right there. Have one tie sitting across both of them. And then you have wherever I could lay another one on top there. So you got three dead men to one full tie. So it's anchored on two corners in the top so it can't pitch forward it can't slide this way and it can't turn that's the idea but since we're near the top and I had enough ties I'm laying in a couple more dead men just for sakes and I'm probably gonna fill this whole thing up with like 2B or number 3 stone uh, just to get her going but I've started to taper them off and the hardest thing I had And I'm, I'm kind of happy with the design. There you can kind of see how it tapers back. The whole thing, about a half inch per tie. It keeps falling back. And it's exaggerated, but it's exaggerated because I never got <laughs> this turn right. If I would, I kind of eyeballed it. And again, what I should have done was run a string line because you can't see the edge there because it all 
kind of starts this way and then as it goes around it turns now that adds I think a little more rigidity than if I would have just done a 90 because it makes it more three-dimensional and it didn't turn out bad I mean I'm not gonna complain about it actually if I had to do over again I'd probably do it just the same but it's worth noting what I did so every tie starts here and goes off and then the next one starts on top of it and then turns just a little more inward a little more inward and a little more inward till you get like these ones which this is where I started to taper it back because I want to make a level with that hillside so I'm level over there I put a full tie there and then cut the end off this one and then I brought that row over to match so I was reading up on how long these things last and I think the original wall that was over there, which was built out of ties, it wasn't built out of landscape timbers. And I'm sorry my camera's shaking, but I'm walking across the top of a tie. And I don't want to slip and break my neck because that would really hamper my building efforts. But this wall here that was original and was still serviceable, it was just kind of rotted. And the only way I could dovetail them all together was to go ahead and tear that original wall down I imagine it's been here for at least 30 40 50 years I'd say closer to 40 to 50 judging by the ties and what they were composed of uh, I also got two different types of ties I didn't realize that till I was way into it but these ties here are a little smaller you notice they don't have the little indentations on them and I don't think they're as creosoted as these ties because you see all the little bumps but I made sure that these ties were up further in the wall there's none close to the base and they're also a different size so if I start a run with this type of a tie I have to finish it the whole way out to there because if I intermix them, they're off by about an inch and a half, two inches, and that causes everything to ripple and bounce. Yeah, that little, that dent in there, I'm not, that's probably the only thing I'm really, like if I had this to do over again, that's probably the only thing I would have done differently, is I would have run a couple string lines, just to keep this all true, because I kind of eyeballed it up, and that's what you're left with as calibrated as my eye is but I'm gonna go ahead and tie these in and this will give you a better idea of the ties that one's on the bottom that one's on the top and that one's at the other corner I probably could have put another one up top here but I didn't feel it necessary uh, this wall is gonna be anchored pretty well <clears throat> and whenever this this ever goes to heave or move it's gonna have to drag that one with it is the idea and all the stone and dirt and everything that's sitting on top of it will have to pull with it it's been a ridiculous amount of work this is taking up months and I just can see the light at the end of the tunnel because once I get maybe another two rows on I'm gonna say in the next tile bring me up to about here and then one more row and I'll be done I'll fill backfill it with as much stone as I have left and then evaluate in the spring and decide whether or not I'm going to fill these in with dirt or the missus said river stone which might be nice too this doesn't make a really good garden because the sun with the wall being so steep behind it the sun doesn't hit it very long that's that's the problem with it like vegetable garden anyway I won't grow anything I won't eat or I can't eat flowers don't doesn't happen We'll, uh, we'll keep on keeping on and see, maybe the next video will be all the wall, all together. And it won't be raining. And my yard is a disaster. Again, couldn't have done it without a tractor. Just not, not going to happen. Can do it. Those ties each weigh about 200 pounds, which you start slinging them around, that gets, that gets to you. Even just sliding them around. But, okay, back to it. See ya, hopefully at the end, which should be today, I hope. Well, 
Springs in the air, and I'm gonna call it done for now. More done for now than it was earlier. I got all the backfill in. Uh, didn't really pretty it up much. Broken shovel. Yeah. Take a walk up and around. Once again, like I said, there's all that piping leads down to there, leads out to there. And I'll probably carry that down at some day past the house, at least to where that gutter is. Uh, over yo. See the gutter? And then that'll be the discharge, but it still flows down the hill. So it's not too bad now. If you're wondering why the base isn't completely full, it's because this is going to be filled with decorative rock, uh, like river stone. Did end up getting more ties. I think there's uh, there's a little over a hundred ties in here. But now the top's full. So once again, the idea is when the water flows in, it all flows down and out. This is all filled with uh, uh, two B gravel. This stuff won't pack, which is fine for the wall. But it should carry all the water down the way. Don't mind a little bit of mud and stuff up there, but you know, sometimes when you're scraping for the last little bit, you get what last little bit there is. But I might take right along here, mound up some clay so that way if we do get water. But I haven't seen any water issues since I put this together. And we got a little over two inches of rain in like a half hour. Saturday. That's why. I mean, I still got to put my yard together. But that's why I've been holding off on that because it's just, you know, it's all wet. But yeah, this thing should not have any more water issues. Like I said, my old wall used to be able to watch it spout. It spout all the cracks, but then that's why none of these gaps. I was, I was never really worried about getting everything like hewn together to be watertight because you, you can't you can't stop the water from getting in but I just don't want the water ever to push and I think with my strategy it shouldn't push but this is definitely not like a weekend project this was a many many week project even in the fact that it's you know March and it's still not done. I started on this in I think September. But I'm definitely happy with the results. And I read that these walls will last the timber wall, railroad tied timber wall will last anywhere from three to seventy five years. And the rule of thumb is by the time you buy them used, the railroads already had them for 75. So, all this, hopefully these trees that gave up this oak and stuff will be there. My daughter, uh, she's 14 because everybody's off for the coronavirus. Now, we had her sweep this uh, patio up. She told me she felt very, very bad for me because she did like this hour of sweeping and she was sore and I was out here for months constructing this. But there's all kinds of anchor points and there's a lot that uh, to tie everything together. I got a little flashy light that says my battery's dying. I don't think there's going to be any more updates because, like I said, the rest of it is just going to be packing some river stone around it and letting nature take its course to reclaim what it wants. But, like I said, the, all the water should be going down to my drain. 
appears to be working. There's a lot of mud here because, you know, this was covered in dirt. But all the water's collecting there and going there. So I might even take uh, and clean this right here out some more so that way the water has another way in. But other than that, it seems to be working. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.